Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, it's April, um, year 2019. Starting to warm up up out there, so I wanted to get this video out uh, detailing this uh, wood stove. Um, and because uh, it's just about the last last fire of the season uh, here, I ran this. You know, like I said, all winter. Um, probably wasn't the worst winter, but definitely gave it a workout. Um, one of the first things that I learned is you know don't build a wood stove in the winter time. You know, it's best to build your wood stove before winter time. Uh, but anyhow, I did this as quick and cheap as I could. Uh, probably would have done it that way anyway. Um, and it turned out pretty nice. So, as you can see, this is made from an old 20-pound propane tank. Uh, there's plenty of videos on making wood stoves out of propane tanks. Um, if you can get a hold of a 30-pounder, that's probably better. I have a couple, but they're not out of date yet, so I'm going to use them up. Um, <clears throat> I did this without any welding. Uh, just uh, some drilling and paint and uh, some grinding. I'll show you the tools in a second. Um, well, I'll show it to you right now. Uh, these are the three main tools. I also use the wire brush. Um, got a big, uh, big grinder, Dremel, and then this uh, one and a quarter inch hole saw. Um, <clears throat> now probably could have built this whole wood stove with only the Dremel and these uh, metal cutting uh, blades. Um, you know, since I have the, I had this grinder, I used it, um, but the metal you know, on these propane tanks is pretty thin, and um, the drum will go through it. Might take a little bit, but um, you can see this is where. Let me back up a little bit here. The J couch used to be, so that's gone finally. Uh, might be back. Um, I built this platform, uh, and I'll, I'll probably take. I will take the, the wood stove out uh, once season's over here. Um, <clears throat> not just put it through. Put the uh, stove pipe through the chimney there. I used some stove pipe from the pellet stove, uh, so that's that's an uh, insulator in the stubble wall and uh, with an insulator. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, well, let me get back to here. This starting over from the left. And I built this for holding the wood. Uh, wood storage takes, you know, having a wood stove in an RV um, is a messy job and a messy endeavor. You need a lot of uh, a lot of wood, a lot of mess, uh, but anyway, I, I love it. Uh, such a nice uh, heat that comes off, um, and cheap too. You know, once it's in there, it's a little, it's in there, then you can just crank it up. Um, let's see, so this is on right now. Um, also, I have, you know, this. Seebeck fan for circulating the air. Um, there's plenty of people use those. Those are really good. Um, that came with a uh, thermometer. Um, very important to have that. Um, not necessarily from a safety point of view, but or managing your uh, wood stove, um, keeping an eye on how it's how hot it is. It's almost up to temperature. It'll go a little bit higher than that for me and then it's on its way up. I just put some in there, but once it goes 
heats up and if it goes back down to that point where it is right now and then it's I got it, it's about almost out and I gotta get some wood in there or else just let it go out um, let's see so as you can see I used a uh, piece of six inch stove pipe here at, for the uh, the door um, this might be a little hot I got some gloves so I can just pop this off um, I have several of these doors made up uh, this is the main one um, I'm sorry um, it has that hole which was made with this um, so that that one uh, gets it going because uh, it lets the air go into the bottom um, and really blows on the like when you're trying to get a fire going you want to have kind of a strong draft directed in a good spot um, you can see these uh, legs uh, I have two legs holding it up and those not only hold it up but they uh, they come in from the floor which under the slide out I've drilled some holes for air and um, so that you can get some fresh air to come in and not cause so many uh, drafts inside the RV uh, that you know this you know pretty much is like a vacuum cleaner uh, sucking out sucking air through and it has to be replaced somewhere so it pulls in cold air from all the little nooks and crannies even more than normal and uh, can make some cold spots, drafty spots. So um, with these pipes um, and if I switch it to that, this one which is solid, um, no holes. So. I put that on there now no air goes in through here everything goes through those two uh, stove pipes from the outside so the air that's warmed up in here is not used for going through the you know feeding the fire um, have this one um, just put a whole bunch of little holes around the exterior there try that out. So, um, it's a little flickery. It's kind of cold at nighttime um, to have that one in there because you can. Um, and it gives a little bit of a light show. Uh, and then, of course, I try to run it. Most with that, it looks it's easiest to see the fire with uh, that clear ceramic door. And, uh, and you get a little extra radiant heat out of it. Uh, it's very little radiant heat. Um, you know, I got a printer right here and it really doesn't get warmed up. I put all, you know, cement board back there and a piece of tile, um, but it really doesn't, the radiant heat didn't um, really affect the surrounding walls that much. I mean, your mileage may vary, but uh, it's very, very low radiant heat off this. I think if it was a, a hotter um, fire, hotter, you know, bigger, a little bit bigger wood stove, the fire would be a lot hotter and uh, get more of a ra radiant heat. Um, you know, or, of course, mainly working off of convection on this one. Uh, this stove pipe goes uh, through this uh, piece of sheet metal is very little uh, conductive heat um, uh, being uh, uh, spread out to there but it's um so that's worked out really well I used uh, that, that's some high temperature uh, silicone that I sealed that with um, and let's see here I've got a little um, been over there for the super dry starter stuff. Um, you always want to, anyway, firewood management is uh, something you learn. <laughs> and uh, you always, that's the best wood back there. And it's, you know, only on a, when you run out of everything else and you need to get a fire going, you use your 
you know, the best kindling. And there's there's kindling back there that I put there when I built all this and I never touched it because uh, anyway, just uh, always try to keep well that box full of the starter and uh, let's see here. Have these right here. These are full of um, pellets from a pellet stove. So I'm going to try to get those used up before the uh, season's over, but um, I'll probably have to store them till next year. Uh, they they do they do work when the fire's really going. Um, throw some of them in there. They're not free, uh, so I'm not going to buy any more of those. Uh, but they were they're good dry wood if um, if I needed them in a pinch, but ended up not needing them. Um, let's see what else. Let's see. So let me just go back to here. This is, uh, you know, the original propane heater. Um, and so this is about 8,000 BTUs. And uh, about the main advantage of this one is that you can just go beep and boop, and you got fire. So um, it's still, you know, definitely use this quite a bit. Um, but it's nothing better than having the. Uh, wood stove with the, the wood doesn't cost anything just some effort um is in the you know when it really gets uh, into winter time you can run this and start running through uh you know 20 pound propane tank in about three or four days so that adds up um Anyway, here's Lola. Let's see. Say bye, Lola.